Lecture 35, we'll now talk about uh, the 3D point group 3-2. So we've been uh, talking about the N2-2, and it would appear that we're missing A2 here, but we're going to show you that indeed uh, the really um, extra, you know, like in the last thing, the extra B axis, if you will, is not truly independent since the threefold axis actually generates it. So this is N22 where N equals 3, but um, we're just showing you ahead of time that something uh, changes there. So just like the last one, we are uh, setting this up to uh, do the next N22, which would be the uh, now threefold axis instead of twofold axis for C. And uh, uh, we put parentheses in two just to remind you that this is an N22, but that uh, what this is indicating is that we're, we're not going to need the extra two to describe the uh, twofold axis since the threefold ends up generating it. So uh, if we look here, you can see that if we use the same thing that we had derived for N22, N22 which is that C equals gamma over two, so gamma in this place, since N is three, 360 divided by 3 is 120. So remember that, you know, in, in a um, threefold axis, we have rotation of 120 degrees, but gamma over 2, therefore, is 60 degrees. Uh, and remember that the solution for A and B stays the same. It's 90 degrees to the uh, C axis. So um, C, remember, is the angle between A and B. So this is saying that the angle between the two-fold axes that are both perpendicular to the C is going to be 60 degrees. And that you can see right here. So um, here I've drawn, uh, remember here's our two axes, which remember that's how we started. We said that the A alpha rotation alpha was going to be 180 by definition. And we started with around pole B, where we have the beta, that's going to be a two-fold axis. So remember, we fixed that. So here's our two-fold axes. And uh, for all cases, these are both going to be perpendicular you know, to uh, C. So really, it's only about this axis, which as we can see from the other part that we had derived, that C is going to equal 90 degrees, right? So there's a little triangle showing that we have this rotation, and, and there you go. That's what the um, the point group is going to look like. Now, to see to see in the stereographic projection style of, of things, uh, I've drawn that here. So here's our central triangle, and then you can see here that we have two-fold axes that are going to go out every 60 degrees. And so that's what you see here. I have a two-fold axis. So again, picture a sphere. We have a axis, a pole coming straight out at us. That's the C pole. So this is the the C, and you could think about you know any one of these, but let's call this the uh, A one. And then can you, you can see here this is this is B. <clears throat> and remember they're axes, so they have to pass all the way through, right? Well, it turns out that this would be a new axis, except it's not, because that that I get just from the need to rotate A 120 degree with the um, threefold axes, right? So basically, all of these in-plane axes are generated from creating a single, a single uh, two-fold axis. Hence, the, why we kind of drop out. Even B is not truly independent. All we really have to do is put A in here. And remember, an axis can't stop just at the pole here. It has to pass through. So in our stereographic pro uh, projection, it's going from one side of the sphere to the other. And there's our triangle. But then the triangle is going to take this, rotate that axis, rotate that axis. And so there's no need to really think about this as a separate uh, B pi uh, I mean, that's how we got here. That's how we started to derive the space group because this has to be compatible. You know, the Euler's equation doesn't talk about, you know, whether it's connected to anything else. It just says that if I'm going to rotate objects about A and B and they have 180 degrees and I make this uh, a threefold axis, it says this one has to be 60 degrees away. 
but when I look at the stereographic projection, I get that anyway from the uh, just having a twofold axis pass through a threefold circle, a uh, threefold um, axis. So that's why uh, you know B really isn't necessary. Even if I just started with A, I would end up with 60, 60, 60, 60, and that's why. Now for the um, the uh, motif, you can see here if I start with an up one. Right, I obviously rotate around and create uh, those motifs because they're all 120 degrees apart. However, remember that these are two-fold axes, right? So again, remember this is like a dash line going to the back side. So this is on the up, this is on the back side of the surface. And it's true for all those. So you can see that these are all two-fold axes. But of course, these are two-fold axes, and that's consistent because if I had drawn this better uh, you could see that this one's related to this is on the top surface and I rotate back it goes over there etc and and here this one's up and if I rotate 120 degrees it uh, it goes backwards so uh, that is 322 which is referred to as 32 because really um, a single twofold axis produces all the other ones. Now, as a final part of of three two, let's just make sure that we um, once again verify that you can see how the uh, motifs would work. So let's picture that I again we've drawn our fundamental uh, shape here, where I have uh, you know. Uh, taken a shape that shows the symmetry of the, I have a triangle here, but I've made a rectangle facing this way because it's two-fold axis. And the other two-fold axis is 60 degrees away, and that lines up with the edge of this uh, prism-looking thing uh, because, you know, it's two-fold. If you were to look down this edge here, it's two-fold. And you can see here that if I draw a motif here, and remember our op operation, which we're doing is first A pi. And we're operating on that after we do the A pi, we do the B pi. And we said that should equal, according to our uh, our work before, that uh, that should give us a rotation of 120 degrees around this. And you can see that here, because if I take our our first rotation, which is about this coming out here, uh, that rotation will swing this about that axis and put us at this corner. If this were, this is supposed to be coming out of here. And so, let's see, if I rotate that this way, it would look something like this. Then I would operate it on with B, and that would uh, rotate about this axis and that would put me over here and then now you can see that if now I were to take this object so this is number one this is number two this is number three and you can see definitely that the rotation of 120 degrees relates that one to that one and that's three two